Today I want to take you guys through the eyes of this inner animal and you're going to see us do some pretty cool stuff. So just take note of what the coach is saying. He works with plenty of spinal cord injury athletes, so he's seen many different things. And please keep in mind, I'm not a doctor and this is not medical advice, nor am I a trainer, but I'm able to work with a trainer like Damon. So I wanted to give you guys an inside view of our workout. Here's some tips that Drew and I shared about using our spasticity. And Coach Damon is going to go over some really awesome tips that he's seen benefit other spinal cord injury athletes. So hopefully you guys can pick up a thing or two in our animal out. All right, be dog. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Now that right leg working, baby. Good. Keep it tight. Heels back. Heels back. Push your, push your upper body back to me. Keep that right leg tight. There you go. Doing great, Sam. Hey, rest. Good job, baby. Hey, when you came up, you came up with so much force it locked out. I'm not doing Do that again. Ready? Yep. Set. Go. Like that. There it is. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Lock it. Good. Good. Doing great, Sam. Keep it locked. Hold it. Hold it. Great. And rest. Last one on the hands this time. Push up position. You're gonna have to go higher. Ready? Set. Go. Yep. And lock. Yep. Yep. Like that. Good. Look at it. Good. Let's go. Let's go. I'm going to let it go. Keep it up. Keep it up. Come on, right leg. You had it. Hey. <laughs> good job, bro. Hey, I'm good. Just here, locking them out. Locking them out. And you get to work your core at the same time. So for another paraplegic, what would be your advice to wear? Like, what, what, what's the most beneficial? Good question. So, for, you talking maybe someone who had like a higher injury? Maybe like yeah, a quad or something or like? No, even tees. Even know? tees? Yeah. That, but like we're not no, 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 walking no, no, yet. Yeah, yeah, not able to walk. Good question. So uh, I would say get, fo start focusing on movements like crawling. So like full body movements that you can do that aren't walking. Because one thing about walking is you're standing up, you're working everything from the feet. You're working everything basically but your arms. You are working even like a little bit of core to upper body with the balance, right? So it's like, there's a lot of uh, return on investment right. with full body movements. Crawling, planking, push-ups, army crawls, pull-ups to standing. That sounds kind of awesome. Right, so it's like, the more full body stuff we can do first for overall fitness levels, that's gonna be number one. Because if you wanna walk again one day and you have too much extra body fat on you, it's gonna be that much harder. Man, I wish I'd have known about the crawl, how beneficial it is for the walking gait pattern. Because I never knew about it, so I didn't even try it. Like Your crawl is a gait pattern. It's a simplified gait pattern. No. That's uh, one that we've had like a lot of success with. Like, if somebody can't do a push-up, all right? I help them get to the push-up, now hold it. All right, now slow as you can. Train that a few weeks, they'll probably be able to do a push-up. Same thing with the legs. Well, let's do all negatives. So you're going to get up, and you're going to try and hold yourself up while you slowly release upper body. I'm here for it. Ready? Uh, yeah. All right. Woo. All right, Let's fix these guys. Yeah. All right. All right, baby. Tell me. Tell you up. It's about good, good form. All right. Yeah. Okay. Ready? And slow. Release them. Slow. Slow. Get them to grab. There you go. Doing great, brother. Okay. Just like at that night, they go from mm -hmm. flaccid to spastic. Okay. Let's do it again. Okay, you up? Yep. Okay, now slowly release arms. Stay up with the legs. Stay up with them legs. Yeah, there you see, yeah, yeah. Good, good. That tone is a good sign. That tone is a good sign. Keep going, good job. All the way up, perfect. Couple more, baby. Ready, go. Unlock, okay. Your locks, now unlock, good. Go slow. Get them, yep. Yeah, there we go. it's a good sign. Okay, two more. That's looking smoother. Slow. Get this to grab. Get your legs to grab. Yeah. I can feel them whenever they release. One more, baby. Last one. Let's go. Hold up. Now slowly release arms. Slow. Slow. Grab the legs. Yup. And dead. Nice work. <laughs> I mean, last one was like, there's nothing left, bro. Hey, good job, bro. Hell yeah. So a lot of what we're doing here is changing up where the balance and the force is, forcing his body to always be able to adapt to wherever this boy locked in. Last one. So it's like, I say hold the front raise in front. Okay, all good. Like he can, he's gonna adjust or do whatever. The, but now he's moving it. Now he's having, he's all, exactly. And so it's like, he, his, 
Drew's not doing that. Like it's subconsciously his body's like responding to it. Yeah, which is one of the reasons why I like using the flu ball for this because that water's in there too. And it's different input. Yeah, it's making a lot of the water. Yeah, the water stuff. throws it off. <laughs> it does a lot. All right, Bijo. And I think that made a big difference just to be able to get the hips through and like, because that's all your movements coming from there. Like that's your, that's your trunk. You know, so Man, early on, base, so. it's like the, the, my top two kind of started coming back, but it was just so much harder and so much more like frustrating because I couldn't get the response. Yeah. But whenever I figured out how to use the spasticity to my, to my leverage, that's why I was like, oh, legs, legs, legs. Now we're to the point where, okay, you can stand. Now let's do more shit. And I'm like, wait a minute. My core is like, no. Not you there. Can't. Yeah. Yeah. You got to refine all the little pieces. Oh, and cool. Just put it all together. Speaking of core, great segue, Sam, to our next one. <laughs> uh, we're going to do planks into some overspeed training, all right? So Drew's gonna get on the treadmill and I'm gonna move the treadmill technically faster than he should be going and it's gonna force the rate of force development in his legs. You're gonna do probably ropes or something else extremely high intense. All right, so and we'll walk right over to the treadmill and... This sound way easier than it is, So we hit the calf stretch number one the calves are connected to the hamstrings, so I like to bring it up, straighten it out, and then I'll floss it here. So we're hitting it, and then I'll floss it back and forth as well. And you can kind of feel it on Drew, like you'll kind of feel it catch. And so this is, if you notice, Drew kind of walk on the toes a little bit. That over time leads to some pretty serious tightness in the calves. So we make sure before he leaves every session that we freaking, we hitting this. We making sure he's leaving. So we hit the calf stretch number one. The calves are connected to the hamstrings. So I like to bring it up, straighten it out, and then I'll floss it here. So we hitting it and then I'll floss it back and forth as well. And you can kind of feel it on Drew like you'll kind of feel it catch. And so this is, if you notice, Drew kind of walk on the toes a little bit. That over time leads to some pretty serious tightness in the calves. So we make sure before he leaves every session that we freaking, we hitting this, we making sure he's leaving.